Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Taurus in mid-June 2020. Hello, Taurus. How are you guys doing? I hope that you're doing well. All right, friends, welcome to mid-June. Hopefully you, your family, and your friends, you're all happy, you're all safe, you're all, you know, secure and healthy and all that good stuff, okay? Um, it's still a very interesting time that we're living in, in mid-June 2020. Um, you know, I'm not at the point in my own journey where I'm going to be speaking too publicly about what's going on at this time, but I would advise everybody to stay safe. We're still in the middle of a pandemic, and I will clearly state that um, I support the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, you know, that's not an automatic thing because I am a person of color, but um, it definitely is something that I stand by and I support, and it's not to dissuade anybody else's opinion, but it is to just state it outright because I feel, you know, that that is the least I could do on this on this forum, on this platform, is to express my support uh, for the movement. Uh, you know, at this time, I encourage everybody to be open-minded. I encourage everybody to be more interested in having constructive conversations and understanding what's going on and, and making sure to properly contextualize what's going on instead of being incredibly reactionary, right? Um, part of my spiritual journey, part of my practice as a tarot reader is to encourage responsive uh, approaches to situations as opposed to reactionary responses to situations and I also encourage people to be autonomous and to and for people to be individuals and to and to state what they believe and and to you know have conviction so no matter where you fall on the spectrum or one side of the issue you're on I respect your opinion but I want to state outright that that is my opinion and that's my stance if you want to know it more about it feel free to engage with me um, but other than that um, just to put it out there, okay? Because what we're seeing is something monumental. What we're seeing is something very poignant. And I don't think a lot of people are able to understand that as of yet. That's, and I'm just going to leave it there. So hopefully Taurus, wherever you are, whatever you're doing and however you're faring, I hope that it's in a, you're in a good spot and you're in a healthy spot and you're in a happy spot. Okay. So let's get into your regular spiel about what's going on today. And the primary reason for this message or this video is your tarot reading for the mid month, uh, May or excuse me, June, not May. Wow. Went back. I went back in time <laughs> for your uh, mid June messages. Okay. Um, uh, for those who are unaware, this is going to sort of mimic how I do my personal readings. Um, it's, it's different than how I do my overalls for the month. Uh, it still very much is a general reading. It's not personalized to you so please take everything with a grain of salt and only take the parts that resonate with you if it doesn't rate it resonate at all that's okay too because again it's not personal <laughs> um, but anything that you want to know is already in the description box so if you want to get a personal reading with me that information is down below simply follow the steps that are listed there contact me and I will send you a hey I'd love to work with you because I do I want to work with anybody who wants to work with me um, but if you have questions before you place an order just go ahead and email me at the same address and I'll answer you as soon as I can you're also going to find a timestamp in the description box if you want to jump ahead to when the reading begins that's what it's there for and you will also see the link to my Instagram on there where I'm doing uh, oracle pulls a few times a week over there and interpreting them uh, intuitively, okay? Anything else you want to know, ask me, you know, get in contact and I'll try my best to answer you, okay? Uh, and yeah, let's get into it. So, Taurus, 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 Taurus. I want to see some energies, messages, and insights for Taurus in mid-June 2020, mid-June 2020 for Taurus. I want to see energies, messages for Taurus that will help them move towards abundance and prosperity in their life and see them progress on their spiritual journeys in a positive way, okay? Messages for Taurus in mid-June 2020. Please show me. Oh, that wasn't... The smoothest shuffle. Messages for Taurus in mid June 2020. Last one, thank you. All right, let's get into it, guys. Mid June messages for Taurus, please. Whoa, that got really stiff at the end, and now it's stiff in the. Mm, I gotta do something with these cards too. Mid-month messages for Taurus. Please show me. Thank you. The sun. Mid-month messages for Taurus. Please show me. And the eight of wands. Very good. Happy to communicate, maybe. Mid-month mid messages for Taurus in June 2020. 
mid-month messages for Taurus in June 2020. Anything else? Maybe we're starting with the two mid-month. Okay, there it goes. I was like, it didn't feel like it was done. And I was right. And the chariot. Okay, more than happy to get on with something. More than happy to make progress in a situation. The sun, eight of wands in the chariot. Sun, secondary major for Leo. Some of you could be dealing with a Leo, but you don't have to be. Um, that's overall, I think, positivity and optimism. This feels really auspicious. This feels really um, confident. This feels really assured. I, I, I get the sense that many of you are like, <sighs> this might not be the best phrasing, but I'm going to go with it. It feels like some of you are coming in with this energy of being above it all. So anybody who's being being petty in your life, any any energy that is basically low vibe, you're above it. And you're really focused on your own uh, positivity, your own happiness, your own serenity. Mm, nice word, serenity. Yeah, a lot of you are like wanting things to be peaceful. And that could be contextualized, you know, in the current global or national uh, sphere if you want to. But, I, you know, it, I, wanted, I want to make sure, I want to touch on that because that could be very relevant for several people's lives. Publicly, nationally, you have a concern for, for things to be peaceful, for things to be calm, for things to be settled. Yes, but more to the point, it feels like it starts at, your base it starts with you right so you're watching a tarot reading i'm gonna assume many of you are into or or into this uh concept of the law of attraction and how to manifest and just basically what a person on this earth of a spiritual inclination is quote unquote supposed to do right i'm putting it in quotes because we all have different interpretations of what someone who is spiritual is supposed to do okay so that's why i quoted it earlier but i feel like for you your personal effort is to be above it all. Again, I'm using this phrase, I'm not comfortable with using it, but that's how they keep like showing it to me or that's how they keep like giving me this feeling of above it all, above it all, above it all. So maybe you're trying to remain on the high high road, right? And instead of going low, you know, we go high to, to, to paraphrase what uh, Michelle Obama had said. When they go low, we go high, like that kind of mentality, right? So that could apply, I think, more specifically to the microcosm of your life, right? So if you're dealing with a person, a friend, a family member, a coworker, uh, you know, whoever, a stranger, someone on a personal level might be taking jabs at you, might be trying to get you to come down to their level or try, ah, <laughs> try and take you off your high horse, right? As we can see, the woman in the car, she's seated on a horse, right? So someone might think that you, you know, and this is the card of Leo, right? So someone might have a perception of you, Taurus, or vice versa. It is a general, so it can go the other way, okay? But there's a vision that another person has where they think you're on a high horse, that your ego is out of proportion, or that you think you're some type of saintly person, you know what I mean? Or like you're above the rest of us. And that might not be your attitude, but you're coming off that way. And that's not a knock. It's not a criticism. That's just what I'm feeling. I feel as though you're coming off as, as being better than, quote unquote, better than everybody else. And again, and I think it's coming from this place of like your own personal development, your spiritual development, possible spiritual awakening for some people. That's massively going on. If you didn't know, politically and spiritually, many people are having wake, awakenings. And, and some are happening simultaneously. Okay? So... I get the sense that you're on this vibe that's a little higher than what you were in a previous point. Maybe you never before this moment were spiritually inclined, politically inclined, and now you're out the gate bursting with opinions or bursting with some type of cause or some type of purpose to you, right? You know, this this is very driven and it's not I don't I'm not feeling a bad skew to this. I'm not feeling maliciousness to this. I'm feeling mostly because it is the sun. It's you know, it might be overly optimistic, it might be overly idealistic, it might be, you know, sort of a pie in the sky kind of feeling uh that you are presenting or or that people are perceiving you with. But pie in the sky, how is that negative? It might be unrealistic, but how is it negative? 
Does that make sense? So your optimism, your your desire to not be involved in matters that are quote unquote beneath you, or let's say counterproductive, or let's say harmful, or let's just say ineffective, right? You, you know, <laughs> to, 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 to draw to what I've seen a lot of people discussing online and social media is there's a lot of counter opinions of what's going on and some people were saying well what's the big deal anyway what's the problem that's part of the problem your ineffective nature your your apathetic nature that's part of the problem so you might be coming to people with that part of your part of the problem here Sally part of the problem here Dwayne or whoever the hell you're talking to is that we as neighbors, we as community members, we as friends, or we as whoever in relation to this other group of people have been silent or we've been, you know, we've just not been a good friend. And it doesn't have to even be about the movement that's going on or, or, or this, this political climate that we're in right now. We could be literally talking about someone accused a friend of yours of something that was unfair or someone called your friend a bad name. Let's just say it that way. Nothing to do with the political movement, okay? It could be your white friend Sharon, and they called her a bitch, right? That, you know, just to, just to throw an arbitrary example out there, right? Because <laughs> I don't want it to make, I don't want to make it about, you know, what's going on publicly. I could, but I don't want to, because for some of you, it has nothing to do with that. So let's say someone near and dear to your heart was called out of their name by some other person a stranger, a, a common friend, whatever, and you stood by and you didn't defend your friend, right? Or you let your friend deal with that, that situation on their own and you kind of didn't offer yourself as like a confidant to them. Maybe you, you lost trust with that person, right? So your criticism to whoever is like, well, what does it matter? Why, do, why should we say anything? How come, why do we need to be involved? How come this has to happen? How come that has to happen? Your criticism back to that person, Taurus, or vice versa, again, it is a general, is like a, well, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Isn't that the decent thing to do? If a friend of yours was insulted and you know that your friend is not a bitch or you know that your friend is not this and not that and not this and not that, why wouldn't you stand up for them? Why wouldn't you vocalize your support for them, right? And you could do that within your own family. You know, you might have family members that are on the out with other with 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 your parents or with your with your siblings, right? It could be something just between a, a group of siblings. There's four of you and like two of you are like on the outs and like one of you is like staunchly saying the other two are the worst thing in the world and you're over there like, but they're not. You know what I mean? So I feel as though you're in a precarious situation. Ah, that's why I'm like talking so much about this. The Eight of Wands is right there. So you're in heavy discussions, Taurus. Eight of Wands. Communication. Fast communication. Right? Could be pointed communication can, or passionate, let's say that, impassioned, very fiery, okay, because wands are related to the fire signs, right? So something that's impactful, something that's very important to you, you're heavily discussing this, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with people over a certain issue that is either very personal to you or very or very public and, and and it's still personal to you or important to you, I should say. And regardless, I feel that you're trying to come at this with some type of guidance or some type of high vibe energy like you know you could be you know i'm i'm a cynic myself naturally okay about most things i'm very discerning i'm usually a realist i'm i'm learning when to be an optimist okay but i but that comes after years of being young and being super pessimistic so like i'm evolving and i feel like you are this energy is very similar where you're trying your best to elevate the conversation or elevate the energy around certain conversations. You don't want it to devolve into a shouting match between your parents and your siblings, right? You don't want it to be a bunch of name calling between your friends, or you don't want it to be adversarial between you and your coworkers. Like there's no point in that. It doesn't get you anywhere, right? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't get you anywhere. Because the final card in, in your first spread here is the chariot. The chariot is definitely interested in going somewhere. I mean, look at this. Person behind, this woman behind the wheel of a car, the, the sign is pointing, go that away. You know, so there's this interest in movement. There's this interest in progression. There's this interest in not being stagnant and being left in the same spot. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely, 
either very personal to your experience, like someone might be, you know, you might be coming up to or coming up against people who want you to stay a certain way or believe a certain thing or act a certain way. And you're like basically saying, no, that's not at all what I'm interested in doing. So your interest is to move beyond whatever you're experiencing now, right? To transcend, basically. And you're doing it as best as you can with a smile on your face. Some of you, it's a little bit of a smirk. It's a little bit of a, you know, in your face. Some of you are giving somebody the business as you walk away or as you, you divert your energy to a different uh, issue or, or where it's more needed or where it's going to be more appreciated. Like that's the other thing that I'm feeling here. A lot of you are moving away from conversations or away from people that don't appreciate what you bring to the table, right? So if the sun, <laughs> again, related to ego uh, or Leo energy, which is, you know, Leo often is associated with the, with the ego, right? The sun basically <laughs> It's the center of the universe, right? So everything revolves around it. Now, I'm not trying to say you're trying to be a diva or you're, you're trying to be, you know, like some big boss and everybody pay attention to me. That's not what I'm saying. It's more like a, if you don't appreciate the sun, then like, why? Why? Why are you here? Does that make sense? Okay, let me, let me clarify that a little bit. If someone were to, on this earth, literally go, meh, about the sun, Why? The sun gives us everything. It heats us. It gives us food, right? It, <laughs> it you know, uh, in combination with other uh, systems and, 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 and science shit that I can't really explain. But without the sun, this planet would be dead, period. Period, right? So if you don't appreciate the sun, that means you don't appreciate life. Like if you think about it in, that, in those terms, right? If you don't like the sun, if you're just like, eh. Uh, you know, uh, well, you know oh, the sun is overrated. How? How? It provides us with everything. Everything. Right? So how could you not appreciate it? So it's sort of like that. Maybe some of you feel unappreciated. That's a long way to say you might feel un unappreciated by someone or a group of people. And so your answer is to go where you are appreciated with the chariot. Interesting. What other messages do you have for Taurus at this time in mid-June? Please show me. What other messages do you have for Taurus in mid-June? Please show me. The High Priestess. Yes, some of you are on this spiritual journey. Some of you are having a spiritual awakening and other people are not vibing with that. And you have to move on from it. And that's... Oh, God, that is what's going on in general. But some people don't know that and they don't appreciate that. And the Hierophant, you have four out of five major arcanas. It's Tauruses, who this is applying to, you're having some type of spiritual awakening. Now, it doesn't mean you're doing your spiritual journey the way I would, the way he would, she would, they would, whoever. It's very personal, right? So don't uh, criticize yourself or don't allow people to come and criticize you. Well, if you're going to be spiritual, you got to get right with XYZ God. Hold up. That's, you know what I mean? Like some, that could be what you're kind of like coming up against is like I'm trying to express myself I'm trying to embrace this moment for myself I'm trying to contextualize what's going on in the world and how that affects me on a personal level as well as a public level and somebody is like possibly telling you how to go about it and it's just like no 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 so what is happening on a not a deeper level but to contextualize or to, not even contextualize excuse me to further exemplify or further demonstrate what's going on. You had the High Priestess and the Hierophant come out. High Priestess, secondary major arcana for Cancer, also sometimes associated with Pisces, and then the Hierophant is major arcana for you, Taurus, so you show up in your own reading. You could be dealing with these signs or none at all. It is a general, okay? But what it feels like is your High Priestess is informing your Hierophant. And these two are actually... They're basically like, they're not matches to each other, but they're very similar in the sense of the high priestess has a lot of knowledge, right? You know, what she has, and I only say she because there's like only females in this deck. They're actually, to me, the high priestess is this deep concept that has no gender and all this other kind of stuff, but whatever. 
But on this card, this high priestess possesses all the knowledge in the universe, right? Uh, in the traditional tarot, many times you'll see the high priestess depicted with a book. And that book has all the information from Alpha to Omega, right? So wealth of knowledge, but lots of silence, okay? Deep inner knowing, but not super expressive all the time, you know? Um, and definitely doesn't give answers that we want. Gives us information that we need or leaves, leaves things unknown. And that's the purpose is for it to be unknown or it's unknowable or it's unfathomable, right? So there's like a lot of mysticism around the high priestess. The hierophant comes with the same type of impacts, the same type of oomph, but... The, hi the Hierophant is more relegated to the, the real world, the 3D experience here on Earth. So, a lot of knowledge, but not all knowledge, just a lot. Okay, there's a difference. All the knowledge, a lot of knowledge. Okay, very different. And then the Hierophant normally is relegated to certain systems in life, right? So, in traditional tarot, you will see like a priest... And he's usually like uh, speaking to some monks or something like that. So religion, government, school, mm, entertainment or media. Like these are systems that have a lot of knowledge and have a lot of power. But it's limited. It ultimately is limited. There are limits to all of those systems that I just listed off. The high priestess is limitless. You see the difference, right? St both powerful. But we probably would recognize the hierophant a little easier because, well, we live here on earth. We don't live out in the cosmos. We're not these, we are living a very <laughs> physical, tangible life that has like all these rules and regulations to it. So my point is this, you are going through some type of awakening, some type of uptick in your life, politically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Um, yeah, I don't see much here of your physical life other than the chariot involves some type of movement. So some of you, like I said, you might be packing up and, or did I say that in the previous reading? I might have said that in the previous reading. But the chariot can indicate to some type of movement. So you might be moving, literally moving your physical body, moving your physical home, and going somewhere, and you're guided to do it from an internal space, right? So some of you might be moving away from a more traditional, structured place with the Hierophant card to a more open or expansive uh approach to life like the high priestess would would sort of i guess advocate for or or support i should say and all the while no, i don't know who this is but this person exists in your energy but actually what i'm feeling and look what i made i kind of made like a little bit of like a like a reverse triangle or like a little shield like I'm, I'm seeing like a shield here so what i'm feeling with that or why i'm pointing that out is you have protected yourself some of you are like deep into the, like the spiritual practice like you're doing rituals you're burning candles you know you're 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 laying mantras out there because you're not trying to screw up your high vibe and i mean oh god duh look at the artwork that's on the eight of wands for those of us that are old enough to remember what does this sort of you know mimic it kind of mimics that uh tv show bewitched right bewitched was about a woman a witch and she was married to a layman a regular man and she was super magical and she just made shit happen when she wanted it to happen. But she had to tame herself. So maybe some of you are like that. Maybe some of you, or she had to hide it, I should say. She just didn't have to tame it, but she had to hide it. She had to pretend like she wasn't a witch, right? So maybe some of you are like that. Like you've been in the closet, like studying, you know, esoteric things. Or you're getting into this and, and your friends or your family disapprove. And you're kind of like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. And they're like, get out of this house. And, you know, God forbid that happens, but that's reality. Sometimes that's the way. You know, and again, to tie it to the political movements of the day, you got a lot of people going through a lot of family strife over certain positions or certain beliefs and how it's coming out. Like I've been seeing a lot of videos of people having incredibly painful exchanges with their friends, with their family over their opinions, over their opinions about the value of human life, right? Or the value of whose life matters most and all this other shit, right? And, you know, again, not to, to, to bring that up too much, but I, get, I hope you get what I mean. So, possibly in your private life, you're having a lot, 
or you're you're finding yourself in a in a need to protect yourself. I feel you're heavily protected. Like I said, you've got four out of five cards that are major arcana. When we see that in tarot, that usually speaks to the universe, you, you know, whatever you believe in or do, don't believe in uh, up in the cosmos, up above your head, right, is inter intervening or having some type of influence on your situation. So I feel, Taurus, mostly you're protected in some type of way. You've, you've done it yourself or it's happening on your behalf. And the progress, to me, feels quite unstoppable. The sun, you can't stop the sun from shining. The wands, they move. That's, that's, that's showing movement. The chariot shows movement. And these are like developmental energies, it feels like, the high priestess and, and the hierophant. So good for you. Let's go ahead and get you an oracle card, and then we're going to wrap this up. Which oracle deck for Taurus, please, in mid-June? Which oracle deck for Taurus in mid-June, please? Mm. Magical spell cards that make sense. For those who don't know, or, or <laughs> this deck ta uh, uses spells, and I was talking about that. Some of you guys are definitely into this metaphysical esoteric space, and you might be cast in spells. I don't know much about it. I just got this deck to incorporate for certain readings. I don't do spell work myself. I do manifestations, but I don't do spell work. But some of you are totally into spells, so good for you. Let's get an oracle message for Taurus, please. In mid-June 2020. Oracle message for Taurus in June 20, mid-June 2020. Excuse me, mid-June 2020. Oracle messages for Taurus in mid-June 2020. Please show me. This is the last one. Thank you. Ooh, I almost dropped my cards all over the place. Typical. <laughs> all right, let's see. Okay. Divine guidance. Go on, you guys. Do it. Do it. Universe. Card 38. You add that up. That's an 11. That's a master number. Divine guidance. Whispers from the beings who shine. Let their messages be clear and kind. Hmm? So we're going to read a little bit from the book. These passages are super long. So if you want the deck so you can read the messages, I suggest you get it. It's a good book. It, it's, a, it's a good deck and a good book. I like it. All right. So a little bit from the book directly. Divine Guidance. When we are in a fix of some kind, we often wonder how we came to be in such a dark situation. We may turn to, to counseling, discussions with close friends, money or addictions to either help us or to numb us to the pain of being in such troubled times. But there is a wonderful alternative, and that is to seek divine guidance and counsel to help us see the shining path which lies before us anew. If you were chosen by this spell, the universe wants you to know that it has something important planned for your life, which may be difficult for you to see or even believe mm, at this time. This spell will connect you with the source, with a source of divine guidance, which will offer you messages that will help you steer your way through any trouble and into the new dawn that is coming for you. You will be blessed with clear direction, comfort, and a sense that all will be well. You simply need to be open to these messages. Now, there's a whole bunch left. I'm not going to read it, um, you know, because it's a public reading and we got to move these things along. But that to me speaks to the sun where you're kind of choosing to be in a high vibe, even though other people are trying to drag you down from that. What to believe and ha and basically trying to stay faithful or find something to to, you know, keep your keep your spirits up. I think that's related to the high priestess and the hierophant and then finding a safe place to go and knowing that you're taken care of or knowing that you're going to progress towards something good. Eight of Wands and the Chariot. Beautiful. Taurus, that's amazing. In my opinion, of course. Um, but Taurus, that also marks the end of this video. Uh, if you like the messages that are here, if you like the video, please go ahead and click the like button down below. If you want to leave a message down below uh, that kind of, you know, explains how this resonates in your life, you want to leave a comment, that would be amazing as well. If you want to share the video or and to let other people know that you like my stuff, you know what that makes you? Amazing. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, there is a button specially made for that. So go ahead and subscribe, friends. Guess what? It would be amazing. <laughs> Taurus. Um, I'll be back soonish. Um, I'm still going to be doing a surprise live within the month of June. 
uh, just so I can reach out and, you know, get in touch with more people who are in the collective, uh, do some collective readings as opposed to the specific Zodiac readings that I do now in my lives. So be on the lookout for that. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and being notified so you can see when I come on and do that. Um, I'm also going to be back soon to do your July messages and your mid-Julys after that. So hopefully I see you in the future and, and you come back for a little bit more of what I have to offer, okay? Uh, Taurus, I thank you guys so much for watching. Take care.